Oh, we're not recording on video because I forgot to press record. Good people of the Drummerverse. There's been a question people have been asking me practically since the beginning of this channel. Every time I try to ignore it, it comes back louder. People are even starting to text me about it. They're texting me a lot, actually. Before I get into it, let me paint this picture. You're at a jam session. No, wait, you're at an improv class. I'm getting tired of jam sessions. Let's jam with the cats. He's a heavy cat. He's a bad cat. Sorry, jazz school hangover. Ooh, favorite jazz school cliches, MSM edition. Try not to bastardize the art. Think about that for a second, then you got it. Have I lost 97% of casual viewers? Anyway, here's the situation. You're playing with some cats you're trying to impress, and somebody calls Benny Golson's stable mates. <laughs> or Boo Boo's Birthday by Monk. This is drums, you think. I just have to keep the swing. Then the bass player starts getting tricky with the phrasing. Or playing the changes early or late, like Joe Infinity Sanders. Or worse yet, it's time to trade. Now all eyes are on you as you pick your way through this irregular form with tons of gotcha irregular phrases and different second endings from first endings. Or maybe you're just new to playing jazz and keeping even I got rhythm changes straight is a challenge. Either way, the long suffering folks in these situations have reached out to me, sounding the cry for help. Help me Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. Well, fear not, drum turnettes. Today, I'm gonna to give you a couple quick pointers for playing along with the form. Jazz cliches. Did that cat vibe? I always heard he was a good hang. The primary issue with playing forms is that nobody practices them. Or we only practice them with other musicians when it's crunch time. Or we only practice them with recordings. The trouble with recordings is musicians on the recordings will always play the same solos and comping. So we can get used to auditory cues that won't be there in a live situation. It took me a while to realize there was a better way. Part of it was I suffered embarrassment in class and at places like Cleopatra's Needle, night after night. So I assumed that was the only way to learn. But it's not. Here's the simple way. There's a man called Jamie Abersold who's played just comping, changes, and walking bass to practically every jazz standard ever written. Tonal instrumentalists are well familiar with Jamie. I can still hear his tracks wafting out of apartment windows in Brooklyn sometimes, like it's 1958. But drummers, maybe not so much. Well, we don't have to use Jamie, but we drummers should be taking advantage of one big piece of technology that didn't exist back in the 90s, and that's GarageBand. I'm choosing one of my favorite standards of all time, Benny Golson's Stablemates. I love this tune because it used to kick my ass at jam sessions, and it's ready to punish those who haven't done their homework. But it's also just a great tune. Here's five seconds of Benny Golson playing the tune. And here's an excerpt of Walter Smith's group playing it with Aaron Goldberg, Joe Infinity Sanders, and Marcus. Anyway, I could easily have used the Jamie Abersold track to illustrate this, but I found something even better. This guy. Two, three, four, one, two. He's got a channel of videos with beautiful upright bass sound playing along with standards. 
and he swings. I'll link his channel below. Please give him a shout. Anyway, whether it's Abersold or Mr. Sunny Bass, you can do as I did and simply insert the track into GarageBand. Here's where the fun begins. Okay, here I am back behind the drums now. Yay! So part of the reason drummers routinely lose the form is we're not thinking melodically or harmonically. We should be, and all the good drummers do, but since it's not required of us to simply beat time, it's easy for us to get lazy. So first exercise, sing or whistle the head along with the recording. With stable mates, it's easy. There's a reason I'm not choosing Confirmation or Bebop or some other Charlie Parker madness, let alone Lenny Tristano. So sing or whistle the head until it's comfortable. Two, three, four, one, two. Then, obviously, play along with the recording for a couple choruses, trying to keep that melody in your head. Next, we're going to have some fun. Make another track. Play along with the chorus, just hitting a cross stick at the beginning of every bar. Record yourself. Now. Delete just the A section of the tune in the master track so that all you can hear in your earphones as you're playing along is your cross sticks at the beginning of every bar. Record a few choruses this way. Two, three, four, one, two. The exercise here is to see if you have the form in your head well enough to come in with the right part of the recording. Now, delete the B section, and same thing, try to come in cleanly at the reprise of the A section. Finally, delete the whole chorus so that you have only the melody and changes in your head to play along with. And see if you come in at the proper place. That's it. I should also say a word about the psychology of losing the form for drummers and why it probably irks other musicians so much. Because for a sax or bass player, let alone a pianist, Learning a tune doesn't just mean learning that the A section is 10 bars long or that there's a two bar tag in the second ending. For them, it means learning the melody and every single change. Sure, once you get the hang, you can learn new tunes pretty quickly. But at the beginning, it's a slog. So here we are behind the drums on the bandstand with these cats who have bled for these tunes. And we think we can understand the entire form in just 35 seconds of is there a tag ending on the second ending? Is it AAB or AABA? And then we still get lost. So for that reason, and because it sucks to get vibed, we the drummers should try to do better. Besides, once we start assuming responsibility for leading the band and maintaining the form, it's a big leap in our musical maturity. Okay, one more. Another way to make sure you have the form firmly in your head is to practice odd length phrases. I'm going to play one part of the form with 5-8 phrasing, then try to come in at the proper spot. Two, three, four, one, two. Then another part with three beat phrases. The 
This is for the advanced guys, but it can be a lot of fun. No sales pitch here, but I will invite you to subscribe to my free mailing list by clicking below and entering your email on the next page. And by subscribing, you'll get three free videos that'll improve your playing, I assert, more in the next three weeks than it's improved in the last six months. The second of these three videos deals with jazz drumming and gives you some shortcuts for maybe how to sound more authentic faster. If you dug this lesson, you'll definitely dig that. See you guys back soon in another lesson of the week.